What is going on guys? My name is Jericho, and I thought that I'd read to you an essay that I wrote for my final exam in English 103 at college. And it, uh, it deals with, with gaming stereotypes, so I thought it would be of interest to you guys. So, you can either, you know, listen or click out. The gameplay is just here to give you something to look at if you want to, but it's not really important. So, I'm a gamer, and why does that sentence feel like an admission of guilt or the gunshot that leads to social suicide for so many people? Probably because very few people hesitate to tell me that gaming does nothing for me, that I'm wasting my time talking to strangers online, making worthless money in an online world, becoming socially inept, and that I won't be able to put my video game experience down on a job application. The truth is that gamers are subject to a harsh stereotype that many don't hesitate to bring up, probably because it's social norm nowadays. And these few examples all seem to stem from the personal character stereotypes that gamers are subjected to. First off, let's take a moment to create an image of a gamer. What gender are they? How do they look? How do they act? What is their social life like? Chances are you probably did that with ease and are ready to continue. But before we do, ask yourself, how do you feel profiling a gamer? Take this time to profile an African American, an Asian, a Mexican-American, an immigrant, anyone for that matter, think of a stereotype. Do you feel a hint of guilt when you do so? Odds are you didn't feel uncomfortable profiling me, or any other gamer for that matter, so that in itself should say something. My mom used to ask me to get off the computer and do something productive with my time when I was in middle school. I was playing a game called RuneScape about three hours a day and on weekends. The thing was that I was doing something productive with my life, I just didn't really know it yet. I had an empire set up. My friends from down the street and I, we set up a business of merchant coal. We bought it by the hundreds for 25 coins a piece and sold it 35 coins a piece in different locations as far away from the mine as possible. I was 12, but I was running a full-time business. Calculating time and effort and transporting goods, running low-cost benefit analyses, hiring miners to do my work, and tracking all this through a spreadsheet to ensure I wasn't being cheated out of my money. What exactly is wrong here? Am I being antisocial while I build up my empire of workers and slowly monopolize the coal market? Depends on what your definition of antisocial is. As a middle school student, there isn't much you can do besides go over to your friends' houses after school and on weekends, so how much was I really missing? Unfortunately, I went out for vacation that summer and was away from the game for a month, and I came back to find my entire coal empire crippled and my knowledge of the game outdated. What I did learn through playing online video games with a million other kids and undoubtedly older individuals was that the study of economics in a system took months to set up and businesses often had to make decisions that upset customers such as raising prices. The result of this would be the loss of buyers and an increased risk of competition from those who believed they could set up a system more efficient than mine. After all that time setting up a network of workers, managers, and executive officers, it only took one month for me to lose all loyalty and understanding of the system. It would be hard to argue that this game taught me nothing about running a business. I bought my first Xbox when I was in ninth grade. The online aspect that let me play with friends and random people I've met all over the internet, all while talking to them through a microphone. It was at this point when I started to spend the majority of my free time playing video games, be it by myself, with friends over, or by talking with them over Xbox. And about the same time when my parents started throwing around the term addicted. Luckily I played soccer year round, was doing very really well in school, so there really wasn't much they could hold over my head. Let's take a second to address that statement. My parents were mad at me because I played Xbox so much. Even though I had good grades, exercised intensively, almost daily, and was happy. Would my parents be doing this if I were addicted to books or sports? Hell, would they even bring it up if I watched three hours of TV every night? What exactly was the issue with me taking talking to others on a video game platform? The beauty of the internet is your ability to be anonymous, being invisible if you wish. What's the age-old thing that everyone tries to teach their kids, that everyone promotes as a way that humans should function in Western society? Ah, you know what it is? It's that one should judge others based on personality, on non-physical attributes, to not see race. What do you believe a friendship forged through voice-only communication does? Am I making real friends online? I met a guy named Skittle on Xbox about three years ago. He was an easygoing guy and we got along well. Talked about in-game issues and what we like to play and soon we were almost playing together every day. Over time we grew closer, started talking about things that happened IRL or in real life as we'd like to say, and knew each other's friends and family. On Xbox you have a tag 
that replaces your name, mine being Jericho, so when you choose to let go of that anonymous tag, it's considered a pretty big step. Skittle's name is Mario, but before I knew this, I knew that he lived in Santa Monica. I knew that he was training to be an EMT. His favorite food is In-N-Out Burger, and the entire story of how he ended up getting shot in the leg. I didn't know until about six months ago that Mario was a Mexican-American and had black hair. This is where you tell me that he's not my real friend. This is also where the gamer stereotype has hit the worst. Until I had talked to Mario, no one knew that I had been bullied. Because we are anonymous to an extent, we can share details without being judged, without having prejudices, because we don't know the person on the other end looks like, because we can't hold them ac accountable to a stereotype, because odds are, we won't meet up. Both my parents and friends alike love to poke fun at the fact that I play with fake people, with non-real friends. Well, they're my separate online friends, they're not my real friends. Which is odd because I distinctly remember pen pals being a fad back when my parents were growing up. This isn't an isolated incident though. Ask any gamer out there if they believe their online friends are really friends. In fact, I was able to take this a step further. I had never seen my friend Emmett in person. His Xbox Live gamer tag is Showers. Or even video chat, I never saw him on video chat. I had met him through Xbox, and we had worked together to create YouTube videos as well. Two summers ago, my family traveled to the United Kingdom for my cousin's graduation, and we decided to visit Cork, Ireland, to see some of the castles that my great-great-grandfather owned. Emmett lives somewhere north of where we were staying, yet he and his friend Chris made the trip down, and what I can only describe as the most interesting hug of the century, we met up and went to watch a few of the World Cup games. You may think it's strange to finally meet someone you've talked to for ages but never seen, or maybe even awkward. What do you say when you meet? You live in two different countries thousands of miles away. For starters, we continued talking about music and gaming, just like we had left off a few hours before he began driving down, and then proceeded to watch a soccer game unfold while eating dinner. To say that friends made online are not real is an insult to the very thing most people have taught their kids when they were growing up. Real friends, real experiences, and real jobs. About two weeks ago, I placed on my LinkedIn professional profile that gaming was one of my special skills, right beside conversational in French. After telling my dad this, he laughed out loud and told me it's probably not a smart thing to put that on a website devoted to job networking. But the reality is that it's a core part of me that I feel can bring a varied approach to problem solving. Think about it. Managing, marketing, all those things involved in video games. Stepping back a year or two, a few hundred people began recording themselves playing video games, offering tips and tricks to help others improve. I too hopped on the bandwagon and started uploading videos to YouTube. With the recent addition of advertisements on videos, YouTube has become a full-time job for me, allowing me to profit off of my content based on advertising revenue that my videos produce. I'm not the only one who does this either. Currently, there's a network of over, over 2,000 gamers who post their content to YouTube and receive payment for it, arguably hundreds of thousands who do it for free, and millions who watch on their computers and phones every day. Running this video game driven channel on YouTube has taught me more real life lessons than I could have found anywhere else, from scheduling, to marketing, to social media, to running a full time business. Not only that, but with gaming attribute on my profile actually helped me get a more traditional job with a marketing company. For myself and the hundreds of thousands of gamers eager to run YouTube channels for pure enjoyment and if lucky, profit, gaming has pushed us to gain real world experience in a largely harmless environment where there's not much consequence of failure. Really, the only other place you could find this would be in, well, school simulations. With Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 becoming the largest entertainment release of all time, it's hard to find someone who hasn't heard of it. In fact, Modern Warfare 3 grossed more in 5 days than Avatar the movie did domestically. In just 5 days, $775 million in sales was reported, as compared to the $774 million total gross sales of Avatar. We can't rid stereotypes from society, nor can we argue that there aren't a few people who in fact fit the stereotypes we use. It will take a long time for the social norm to gravitate away from categorizing gamers the way we currently are, but with the recent popularity in video games, eventually those who categorize will stop. So I, that's my essay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I thank you guys for watching, especially if you watched all the way through. I know it was a longer video. And finally, I'd just like to say that if you guys could keep the students and faculty and everyone at Virginia Tech in your thoughts because of the uh, recent shootings, that'd be great. Uh, you know, I know a couple people will go there, and it's uh, a very difficult time, especially since it's only been 
three, four years since the last shooting. So, uh, you know, we we don't want anything bad to come of that. And I just, you know, I'd love it if you guys could keep them in their thoughts and prayers. So thank you guys for watching. My name is Jericho. I hope this, uh, this essay has brought light on anything or anything or at least was interesting. And uh, hopefully you guys will stay tuned for more. Later.